Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for stopping by. I haven't done a video for quite a long time, but oh well, here we are with a new one. I think it's a very interesting one because it's very crucial, I would say. And today's topic is going to be how to remain organized within Final Cut Pro 10. Let's do this. Okay. Imagine one of these situations where you've been working for the whole day, working for long hours, you're in front of a screen for such a long time, your back is hurting, your eyes are burning, your brain is saturated, you can't work anymore, but this is it, it's the end of the day. You finish your project, export it, and you send it to your client. Time to go to bed. The next day, you wake up and you have a nice email saying you got some tweaks to do. Can you change this footage and use this one instead? Remember the shot that we've done last minute before we finish shooting? Remember that one? And today you decide to work from your desktop instead of your laptop that you were working yesterday. You plug in your hard drive, open your library and you get this and this and this. Okay, before you start panicking, think that everyone's been there. Mainly when we were starting out, we had to deal with these situations. However, today's video hopefully is going to save you from some future panic attacks. Thank you for that. So the best thing that you can do in order to avoid this kind of awkward situations is to deeply know the structural organization of the software. That means you understand what libraries, projects, events and keywords are. So to help you understand that, think about these organizational features as a pyramid. At the top of the pyramid, I would put the libraries. And this is because a library, each single library, can include as many events, as many projects and as many keywords as you want. In order to open a library, you just need to double click on it. And by the way, it's good to know that in Final Cut Pro, you can work on multiple libraries and you can open multiple libraries at the same time, which from time to time can be really, really handy. A library is stored in a location that you choose when you setting it up, when you are creating it. Well, I personally keep my active libraries, the ones that I'm still working on, on external SSD hard drives. They look something like this. Well, I got quite a few of those. And when I finish editing and I submit my work and everything is delivered and approved, I archive my libraries to a different location. Now, another thing that you really need to know and make sure that you understand is that you can keep your material internal to your library or external. Both options have pros and cons, so it's really up to you and what works better for you and your needs. Well, if you choose to go external, then in this case, you need to be really, really, really organized because if you accidentally delete something from the material that you use for your library, there is no way back, my friend. You are in big trouble and you will get a lot of these. Now, if you decide to go internal, that means that you should be prepared for really large libraries. So you need a lot of space, you need to have bigger hard drives, but on the other hand, you are safer and you can edit more confidently. So as you can see, it's up to you. You have to decide what matters more in your case. So back to the software, if you select the library, like it's selected here, on the right side of the browser, you can see all your media, which means your videos, your audios, and your stills, as well as your projects. Now going down and clicking on that arrow right here, we go to the next stop, which is the events. Now, if we want to describe what events are, events are uh, collections of media that you have imported and that you have organized in a way that works best for you. 
Let me explain. So in my case, in this specific library, I have created an event called material and I've also have the default event that Final Cut Pro creates when you create a new library, which is actually the date when you created this library. Now on this event, for example, I have imported footage from my cameras and I've also imported a screen recording as you can see here. But when I have more complicated libraries with a lot of footage from different cameras, what I tend to do is that I create events for each specific camera. So for example, I have an event from the footage coming from my Sony a7S III and I have another event for the footage coming from my Sony 6600. I also have another event for my screen captures. And last but not least, I create an event called extras where I put any assets that could work for the specific video that I'm working on. Could be stills, could be music, could be PNG icons, well anything really that I might need for the specific video that I'm working on. Now, if you want to go a step further and you want to organize even more your material, a good way to do this is by adding keywords. So in order to add a keyword, you just need to click on this icon right here and you add keywords. As you can see, I've already used some keywords here, intro and material. You can add something else. I don't know, call it like uh, ending and mark with it footage that might work very well for an ending shot, let's say. Now back to the browser, if you see this blue line on a clip, this actually indicates that there is a keyword that has been applied to this specific clip. Next stop, projects. Now a project is where the media is edited together on a timeline and you can access your projects by various different ways. So first of all, you can click on the library and on the right side of the browser, again at the very top, you can see your project. This is the symbol for a project. Another way to access your projects is by clicking on Smart Collections. And right here, there is a dedicated category called, guess what, projects. You can click on it and you can see all of the projects that are included in your library. Well, in my case here, I just have one, but as I said at the beginning, you can have as many projects as you like in a library. And the last way to access your projects is by clicking on the event that you have stored it in the first place. In my case, I've stored it in this specific event, which is the date when I created the library. And from here, I can also access my project as well. Clicking on it. So there you go, guys. That was my video for today. I hope you found it useful. I hope you liked it and you enjoyed it. And I hope it helped you understand the basic organizational concepts of Final Cut Pro 10. And a little secret, if you know the system, then you can move on to the more exciting step, which is the actual editing of your videos. So if you like the video, don't forget to leave it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well for more videos like this one. And I hope to see you soon in another video. Thank you so much for watching. Have fun editing.